So you're looking to start a band and you don't know if you want to do a cover band or an original band. There are pros and cons to each, so let's stage dive in. Now for added ease, I'm going to add tribute bands in with cover bands. And as always, I'm coming at this from a rock band perspective, but the rules apply for any genre, really. Now if you're unfamiliar with the difference between a tribute band and a cover band, a tribute band usually tries to copy the original band as much as possible. They'll put on makeup sometimes, they'll wear costumes, sometimes wigs, whatever they can do to make themselves appear like the original artist, maybe similar gear, try, definitely try to capture the, the tone and the stage presence of the original artists because they want the people in the audience to feel like they're seeing the original artist um, so that you can't tell the difference, um, except for the price. These tribute bands will usually stick to one artist or one genre, one era of music, um, because let's face it, if you're doing an 80s hair metal tribute band and you want to switch to the Beatles, well, it's going to be difficult to switch out of the big hair and spandex to capture the old style Beatles look. Now, a cover band will do this to some degree, but generally they don't go for the same type of copy as a tribute band would. And usually they'll put their own unique spin on the covers that they're doing. And then that also makes it easier for them to cover multiple artists over multi multiple genres and multiple periods of time should they wish. So now that we have that out of the way, let's dive back into the video. If you are still early in your journey to becoming a rock legend on your instrument and or you are young, you probably want to consider starting with a cover band. Since everyone is trying to find their footing and maybe it's their first time in a band, you want to find as much common ground as possible just to make things easier and comfortable for everyone so you don't have to worry about arranging lyrics and all the ins different instrumentation in that goes into making an original song just make it e easier and simplify in this scenario you simply have to find a handful of songs that everyone knows and start jamming them out you'll start to discover a lot about your own style and how your instrument complements the others within the band and what it's like just to play in a band. Playing in a band should be about lifting each other up and understanding your role within the band and your instrument's role within the band in order to serve the song, not your ego. If you're new to an instrument or playing in a band for the first time, you'll probably want to consider focusing on being in a cover band, at least initially. Like the youngins, it's the ease of entry factor that really reduces barriers and all the other reasons I mentioned earlier in this video. Now for those weekend warriors, more advanced in age types, well you may have family, a busy job, limited free time, or all of the above. Going the cover band route can really reduce the stress and time needed to develop the band, to, to, to develop the songs that you're working on, because there's a good chance that you have a bunch of songs within your repertoire that you were proficient at or you are proficient at and these are some of the songs that you're going to want to play within the band so it's just a matter of fine-tuning maybe refreshing your memory and getting back to rocking shape but what if you want to make a run at a career in music well that can mean a lot of different things but let's just say a career wherein the band and related merch and music lines of revenue are your primary sources of income well there are valid arguments on both sides of the original versus cover band divide especially in the age of social media there are no shortage of bands going the youtube or tiktok route to build buzz through short and catchy videos of familiar covers that everybody's that everybody knows uh, just to get that buzz and build to build that that fan base one of my favorite bands right now is the warning if you haven't checked them out you're missing out this band is made up of three sisters from mexico 
who started who started their band as preteens. They started doing covers of all the great hard rock and metal songs. Their cover of Metallica's Enter Sandman was a real launching point for their career, in my opinion, and uh, when they started really getting some visibility. And now they're out touring and opening for acts like. Guns N' Roses, Foo Fighters, Sammy Hagar, The Smashing Pumpkins, Pretty Reckless, the, the list goes on and on. They're also headlining their own tour all over the world. They have their second album out, I believe, uh, and they just recently released a new music video that is awesome. It's called Sick. I'll link that in the description below if you haven't seen it yet. It's great. If you're doing the bars and club circuit, trying to build a buzz that way, you know, kind of the old school way of building building up a band. Um, but you're probably still using social media uh, on the side as a secondary route. It seems to be an unwritten rule that you have to be primarily an original band, otherwise you're, you're perceived as less committed to the craft of music and songwriting. It's usually an untrue perception, uh, but in either case, there will come a time when you need to start writing and performing primarily originals. This isn't to say a tribute band can't make a career out of music, because the bands I've met are doing quite well and some are in very high demand, even touring the world, but it's usually not their primary career. Usually. I could be wrong. For those of you who are doing this as a passion side gig, the so-called weekend warrior, you also have a choice to make, each with its own pros and cons. For the originals camp, some pros would be that you're creating something new and original, something that the world has never heard before. I personally find it extra fulfilling when a song comes together and everybody's contributed and put this song together and now it's something that's complete and you're performing uh maybe recording out there it's 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 a great feeling even within this scenario when you're built creating a song there you know there's usually one or two bandmates who bring kind of the the bare the bones to to the song maybe the main riff or the beat or the melody and this kind of thing but at the end of the day it's something that you've built together and it's something that you can be really proud of as a band. Another positive for originals, and this may be a minor one, it's, you know, you don't have to worry about copyright issues when you're making promotional material. This may not be a big deal when you can have popular songs playing on reels and on TikTok and the like, but it can come in handy for more long form videos and some other promotional materials that you may want to put out. Plus, it's a bonus to have your own song uh, back, back in your promotions. Now, another bonus is that unless you have a hardcore following, people aren't going to know when you screw up. Um, and unless it's something massive and jarring. So it takes a lot of pressure off when you're going out, out on stage and you don't have to worry too much about that. Some of the cons would be it's more challenging to get people engaged with your original music uh, before you have a following, especially if you're playing at a pub or another venue that isn't devoted to music per se. These places and the patrons, they just want to hear top 40, they want to hear songs that are familiar to them. Because, especially from the perspective of a bar owner, they just want people drinking and dancing and forgetting their worries. However, this, as a con for an original band, quickly becomes a pro for a cover band for the same reason. Lastly, especially if you're an original band just looking to perform and make a little pocket change without going the distance, uh, it's going to be difficult and time-consuming to build enough of a following to make anything resembling pocket change. If that's alright with you, then by all means. A key point to remember though is that many of these music-focused venues are either pay-to-play or they charge you for the sound engineer, um, sometimes for somebody to stand by the door. But more on that in another video. So if you go that route, I would recommend linking up with bands who have more of a following and open for them as you grow and hopefully their draw will help 
cover these expenses so you aren't paying anything out of pocket to play a show. As mentioned, some of these cons for original bands are pros for cover bands. So as a cover band, it's much easier to engage the crowd because the music is familiar, especially in a pub type setting, whereas in a music venue, you would have to win over the crowd in any case, whether you're playing originals or covers. So make more money from your gigs quicker and easier if you stick to the pub scene as a cover band. These places routinely pay several hundred dollars for a three hour set and usually throw in a couple beers and maybe a meal. It's really an ideal night out, except for lugging all that gear around, especially the drums. Also with covers, it arguably takes less time to get familiar with playing the song just like I talked about earlier, because you've heard it so many times and the song is already created and arranged, so you just have to learn them or relearn them. The con side of this point is that the audience will likely also be familiar with the song and much more aware when you deviate from the original. But depending on how late into the night it is and how boozed up the crowd is, they just want to sing along and they're in no position to critique even if they actually cared about that when they were sober. Lastly, you may get tired of playing other people's material all the time and want to start creating your own. You could do this on the side just to keep yourself engaged with your music and your craft or you can shift to being an originals band or throw in a few originals within the cover band. There are plenty of people who prefer to just play originals all the time and that's of course totally fine. At the end of the day it comes down to preference and what you're after because as long as you're playing music and pursuing your passion full time or on the side it's a win all around. So short answer cover band versus original band it depends on you. Understand some of the pros and cons and if you're going the original route you're likely going to throw in some covers to be more accessible and have some fun mix things up a little bit so there's no hard line in the sand. It's an art, so dabble in different things, try new ideas, and most importantly, have fun. Now in my case, I'm a part-time musician, I have a full-time job and a family, and that's the, that's the case for the rest of the members of the band. Uh, so we are doing this part-time, but like I've said before, it's a part-time job, but a full-time passion. Are you a new band trying to make a decision or you have some other pros and cons that weren't listed here or maybe you're a more professional musician who has some some tips and tricks for the rest of us drop it in the comments below and let's keep the conversation going and if you have any ideas for things you want to hear us talk about please let us know also in the comments until next time this is luke from midnight Day Day, signing off